Oh my god. It's like 30 degrees in Britain at the moment. My idea of the worst weather possible. Hot, sticky, just insanely hot. I'm sweating from cracks that I didn't even know I had. So I thought, I'll come to the greenhouse. The shed where everything's small and insulated and there's a fan heater in here that I accidentally left on for but fuck who knows what reason. And I'm going to make a video because that's, I just, you know, I love uh, hurting myself. So this is another episode of Rewind. Uh, if you didn't catch the first one, I'm basically pointing out cool shit that happened in recent games. Uh, I've got, what have I got? Four of them today, but they're only small, not like uh, yesterday's one. Although the first one's uh, the coolest. <laughs> so you can fuck off after that if you want. Uh, <laughs> no, don't. But the the first one's from Apex, the next are from Contenders. So this first one is just an absolute classic, mate. It's so good. The, I just loved it. I loved watching it. The entire stage is decided like so quickly. Just have a look at this. Double Sombra. To start this one up, so won't be on the Lucio duty. Got relegated or promoted, hard to say. Not sure which one, but yeah, we Rascal gets team, absolutely fucking cooked. Really just, <laughs> just fucked. He gets dumpstered. It was a race. It was a 1v1 rollout, a race, and it didn't work. He got owned. And now he goes Zen. And you fucked, kids. You, LW Blue won that stage in the first 10 seconds, possibly 5. They lose this fight as well, Kongdu Panthera. And then they actually switch again as well. Rest in peace, Rascal dies. The saddest Sombra main in the world. Okay, and then Rascal goes... And thought that they had to have away from like uh, away from the the Zen switches back to what they would. Okay, so this one's awesome. This is uh, obviously this stage is amazing for Sombra. Uh, it's a classic Sombra map. The Chinese used to run it on this map ages ago. The Koreans started as well and kind of I don't want to say perfected it, but definitely made it a lot better. The Chinese were generally quite sloppy and used a lot of Sombra in some situations where it was really weird. Like their execution was quite poor. Uh, North American teams and European teams have also done a little bit of this. Uh, it's not the standard, though, like it is in Korea, actually. But most teams in Korea will actually play with the Sombra. And that's how you get into situations like this on University of Oasis, right? Because, oops, I'll just... Shush, shush, shush. Okay, so, LW Blue, Kongdu Panthera. It's like some weird, whack game theory where if you both go for Sombra, you, you're like... you're playing yourself by p picking the sombra into another team that you know is going to go sombra because it all comes down the entire stage just comes down to one race at the beginning it's just a race for the health pack it's just like which sombra can hack the health pack quick enough and let me tell you pine has got this shit on lockdown he is the usain bolt of sombras apparently at least on this stage we're watching rascal for now but rascal's not the guy who manages to hack it thankfully they were actually watching pine uh, the observers here no way to tell of course all right so obviously you got your invisibility that gives you a speed boost and Gambler is literally going to escort Pine as well down to this lower health kit, right? And together they win the race. I guess they kind of cheated, actually. It was like a three-legged race. They, they, It's a two... I mean, Usain Bolt doesn't have someone, like, speed boosting him along, does he? All right, so use the invisibility. Got speed boosted. You can see the green here is Gambler's uh, speed aura. And then throws out the translocator, gets in, and... There's Rascal trying to do the exact same thing on the other side, literally just on the other side of the wall. They're both trying to get this health kit because whoever doesn't get it is fucked. And oomph. Right. Here is Pine hacking it. I don't know why Gambler throws out a couple of those. Well, maybe he thinks Rascal's going to peek or someone's going to challenge down here. I guess that's a possibility, actually. That's a decent counterplay to the Sombra. If you can get there quick enough, which I don't think you can. Uh, but... Rascal on the other side, you can see him right there, and he's actually just about to start his hacking animation as well. There it is. There's that red line there is Rascal's. Maybe 200 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds after Pine starts. But that isn't good enough. That means you're going to lose. Second is first loser in a race like this. Because Pine then gets the health. I mean, it's so close between the two of them. I'm not actually sure what 
um, Rascal does wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's that Waka Waka doesn't speed boost him down. Because I think, actually, that Rascal, if you watched his silhouette as he comes, like, down here, he actually gets a really meaty translocator throw. Gets a lot of distance out of it really quickly and actually catches up a little bit to Pine, but I'm pretty sure that Gambler, uh, sorry, that Waka Waka didn't speed boost Rascal at all as he was coming along. He just used his invisibility to get downstairs and then through his translocator, just assuming that that would work, like, assuming maybe that he wasn't playing into a Sombra or something like that. But Pine absolutely bosses him with the help of Gambler. They manage to get this one. They lock it up, right? That is now just LW Blues forever. Rascal's like, what the fuck am I going to do now? He's literally useless. Like, what's he going to do? Play DPS Sombra? I, I mean, they've still got 20 seconds until it... it look, Gambler just speed boost. Oh, well, not speed boost, but kind of uh, escorts him back out. And Kong and Panthera are in a very difficult situation because do they really want to go single support, uh, kind of triple DPS with a Lucio into, like, just go head-to-head -head with this composition when they've got the health kit? No, you're going to lose. Like, you're definitely going to lose. They've got a hacked health kit down there that uh, Lunar or Mecha, this, of course, was when Luna was playing uh, Winston for the team with Janice in hospital. Because um, they can just dive down and get their health kit all the time. Pine's going to charge his EMP so quickly. So Rascal and Panthera actually choose a, a wise option given the circumstances. I mean, they made a mistake for the for starters, not escorting, not with Waka Waka not escorting Rascal down there. But they then go back to spawn. Rascal switches over to a support so that they can actually play the two 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 composition, and now they have a bit of a chance, right? Like LW Blue's comp is still really good. Because you can just get the heals under the tanks all the time. And uh, Pine's still going to be doing a ton of damage. He's actually really good on the Sombra as well. Uh, in terms of the damage output that he's able to get. And just his translocator use is really sick. But Panthera at least have a chance now of winning one engagement. And kind of taking it back. And then putting Pine in a sticky situation where they actually have to recontest. Even though they've got the hacked health kit. So Panthera play that one smartly. Because if they just rushed in, that was, that was gone. Uh, but... They can't overcome Pine's additional healing plus damage compared to running the Zen in this composition. And obviously, they're running Rascal on it as well. Maybe they would have been better with Waka Waka or... No, because Luffy's on the Soldier 76. See, they kind of screwed themselves up as well because even if they want to switch back to the 2-2-2, it has to be Rascal doing it. They get kind of bodied here. Fisher gets eaten immediately and the rest of his team follows suit. Rascal's kind of a little bit further behind, wondering why he's playing the Zen Yata. The saddest Sombra main in the world. And Pine just hacks up the health kit like, oh, thanks for that. And now I have an EMP. And they just roll through the rest of the stage. Like, they've already got 13%, but that's not really the point. The point is that they've set up their position so well with Pine hacking this health kit. Both of their tanks now perfectly happy. Kongu and Panthera have had to switch their players around. So they started on a kind of the triple DPS Sombra thing, the same as LW Blue. They've had to switch Luffy and Rascal. Rascal switched twice and... Now, again, they're trying to outplay them. They're going for a Farrakhan position where LW Blue are running the Sombra, so they don't really have the same like, vertical hit scan to be able to take them down as well. But LW Blue just rolled through this one. It's literally the stage was decided in the first five seconds or something. It's, uh, it's a sight to behold. Where was it? It's just so good. I was watching this. It just made me smile so much because I just saw this on the board. And I don't think I've ever seen this in a tournament match before either, despite the... Um, proclivity of sombra on this stage i don't think i've ever seen a direct sombra race in a match uh, certainly not an apex match anyway to uh <laughs> to hack up the health at the bottom and just the technique here has got to be admired pa pow the race and then there's the next one coming out from rascal it's so good okay on to the next one though this next one is oh this next one's just kind of a, a bit of a, just a one that i threw in there it's not much, really. Um, but this is Fraggy uh, trying to very intelligently use an Earth Shatter. So either playing against Gamers Origin, both teams are playing tanks. Both teams are comfortable on tanks. Gamers Origin had been using Dive, and I think they were more comfortable with Dive since putting Dixie Dix and Zick into their, uh, into their role. I'm, I actually don't know how much um, prior experience Dixie Dix had on a team... Like he was on a team called Shooting Stars, but I'm not sure whether they actually played triple uh, triple tank very often. Whereas Game's Origin used to play tons of it, but that was back with uh, Leaf used to play this role instead. So I don't know whether there's some lack of synergy there, because they did look slightly more shaky on it with their new guys. 
But that could also be because I've been practicing and playing dive for so long as well. I'm trying to adapt. Okay, so basically, ninjas in pajamas have one last fight that they need to win to be able to lock this one out and take the map, take Li Zhang. And a game is origin coming into this. Absolutely know that Fraggy has this Earth Shatter. You'll hear Hex talking about it. The Ryan games. He loves the Ryan games. I do as well. And this is just a visible, palpable Ryan games going on because Ben Best so gets far. him, gets his halfway through the fight, and then Dixie Dix gets his uh, self destruct up as well. So have a look at this. It's just yeah, kind of cool. It's nothing so big, but it's just a little thing that's kind of cool. His. He's got his own, but he hasn't been able to be as impactful as Fraggy has so far. It's an overtime now. Oh, six v six it. team fight. Yeah, they're playing so they cautiously, but they're so grouped up right there behind him. They have to be careful. Fraggy can just run behind him, but Zupa comes in, takes out Zick. Here comes the self destruct. Game resort, it doesn't oh, I, I kind of ruined that actually <laughs> for you guys if you're watching it, but uh, so basically, right? So costly. Let's mute the casters for a sec. So they know that Fraggy has the other shatter, they're trying to play around it. Ben Best also has his own, but needs to protect the rest of his team because if Fraggy has the other shatter, they've kind of lost, and Ben Best doesn't need the other shatter to be able to win the fight, arguably. Um, so Poco's just using his shields to try and put a little bit of pressure on him. Fraggy's playing the corners pretty well. And then kind of comes out and drops down into them. Kind of pressuring forwards. Uh, and Ben Best puts his shield up expecting something. They have like the shield wars, the mind games and stuff. But Dixie Dix now has his self-destruct up. The self-destruct goes into the back lines. So Game is Origin try and execute something. Where they put a self-destruct behind Fraggy. It's like a, it's a classic, you know, back from the Diva meta. You just put the self-destruct behind Fraggy. Fraggy has to turn his shield to block it. You earth shatter him from behind. You get the advantage. Or, or even just kill him. And then uh, you can use the earth shatter on other people without having to worry about it so much. Just whatever works, you know. But it's kind of good just to earth shatter Fraggy and get him out of that situation. Just trade uh, the earth shatter for lack of your own team getting that shattered but okay so that goes behind and what i like about this is that it actually doesn't work at all from nip but the thought process was almost perfect the execution not quite there but i really like this from fraggy so poco puts a shield on ben best and he's going to get right up in his face and he's just expecting uh, that Fraggy's going to be turning around here. And Fraggy actually just goes fucking full on into them. Uses the Earth Shatter aggressively before the self-destruct is popped off. And then whips his shield around at the last second. Boom! To try and block the self-destruct. And, and then turn around and actually follow up the kills. Uh, from this angle, you can't actually tell how many people got caught in it. I think it's three. But it kind of looked like Dixie Dix should have got caught in it and never. So I, I don't really know what happened there. Uh, it's difficult to tell from this angle, but if you just watch it again, it's just kind of cool that Fraggy He actually though. That's the thing Fraggy actually doesn't turn his shield around in time and actually ends up getting hit by the self-destruct But it's too far away. So it doesn't actually kill him It just takes off a chunk of his health, but you can tell that as well. So look here comes self-destruct Ben best runs forward Fraggy uses it aggressively and then flicks around his shield <laughs> But but if you slow it down as well, you'll see that Fraggy actually takes a huge amount of damage there he just took a ton of damage he was he was like there and then uh just before he swings his shield around he takes like a ton of damage and ends up going down to that and they they force out the sambo they win the fight anyway though because he manages to get a sick earth shatter off but i i just like that you know because you're putting fraggy in a position where he really has to uh play play it really skillfully to be able to get out of it and he did he got out of it you know he lands a really sick earth shatter and then dodges the self-destruct kind of if it had been any closer he would have died to it so it was a slight misplay from that but definitely the the idea was there so i thought that was kind of cool when i was watching as well all right this one is a slightly longer one again about sombra this time on uh anubis so wait there where was it okay so I, i've got some markets for this one because it's a very long fight but i'm gonna be skipping through it so don't worry okay so Here's the setup from both teams. LG Evil are attacking. They've just uh, attacked with Rob420 on Widowmaker, actually. Rob picked off uh, Jaru really early on and then basically just opened it up. Like, Rob just missed all the rest of his shots, but it doesn't matter because Genji's down, so they were kind of giving up ground and ended up just getting forced back into a corner. And he's limited the sight lines anyway, so he's actually doing a decent job. Um, and then once they capture point A, again, really quickly, they've got a ton of time, like six minutes still. Uh, still and rob 
moves over to the Sombra. Jake moves over to the Reaper. I think they call it the Talon comp, right? Because they're both part of like the Talon group or something in the lore. Uh, although, shouldn't you have a Widow in there as well if you're going to run like... I, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I didn't come up with the name. Uh, so, this is interesting to me because it's an offensive Sombra into a defensive Sombra. They know that uh, Snow's on the Sombra. They've already had... Oh, yeah, this isn't the first attack. So, when it, when it says there's still six minutes, they actually put, uh, capped in the first push. So, I think they had like uh, seven or eight minutes. Uh, but... Uh, they had a, a couple of pushes here with no ultimates up on these two guys, obviously. And so the the issue is, Snow's hacked the health kit, right? Snow's hacked this health kit that's pretty much directly underneath where Cynic is at the moment. Uh, I, he hasn't hacked the, the minis yet on either side, I don't think. Uh, but he does uh, lay the points and manages to get both of them up. So he has like a the triangle of health kits uh, that are so powerful on Anubis. And Rob's in a sticky position, but... They know that he's in that position and they're like playing into it. So the idea is from LG Evil's somber attack here that they want to force a really long fight and focus snow so that at some point and, and play a lot underneath here, you'll see a huge amount of the focus being under this bridge because the idea from LG Evil is that they want to force so that they have control under the bridge and they're not really forcing the fight on the point. And then they want to kill Snow enough time so that he can't actually get down here and rehack the health kit. Then Rob's going to take control of the health kit. Every time they push in, he's going to renew it. And they're going to have a massive advantage in the fight. So uh, this is the first fight. This is actually the first fight where they hack it. But it takes 45 seconds for them to hack it. So you can see that they're going for really long extended fights here. Another reason, of course, that all of the casters mentioned why Jake is good in this comp on the reaper as well is that you really don't need your abilities to play like a decent reaper on anubis last you're all in close proximity fights tend to happen on the card or you can just get duck down under the bridge and take the health kit and then duck back up so at this point snow is in control of the health kit not whether you can quite see it actually but uh lg evil playing on top snow uses his emp but they manage to focus him down he dies uh and oh it must be the next fight actually where they take control Oh, yeah, but you can see that it's hacked underneath the bridge there. Oh, for some reason, I thought it was this fight. It must have been the next one. So, 9.45 it must be. Oh, yeah, this is the one. Okay, so they come in here. Coming down the left, you can see that Snow's just hacked that health kit on the left as well. So, he's got the mini under control. Oops, I just paused a little too late there. But you could see that he had uh, the mega under control as well. Um, And, essentially, Rob is finding it difficult to generate his ultimate here as well. But, this is... This is like um you have a game plan and once you execute it you have a high likelihood of it working but it takes a long time to set up so i think lg evil have gone for this one because they had so much time in the bank that eventually you're probably going to be able to grind it out it's also a decent counter to the sombra because you know normally they're going to have it for almost every fight at some point rob is going to be able to take control of their health kit the way that lg evil are playing and then they're going to be able to at the very least neutralize snow here so he's not going to have it for every fight and kind of set it a bit more even on like a 5v5 or like 5v5 plus sombra kind of kind of sense where you're not actually playing into an emp every single time it's maybe one every three fights or one every two fights at the most and you also have an emp at about the same rate so uh you see snow coming on the left here they're putting a bit of focus on him he has to go back in and let me see at what point do they take it oh at 10 13 apparently so another 10 seconds and you see it switch ownership so jay so again they're taking a really long extended fight on the point here but the idea isn't really to win the fight i mean if they got tons of picks they'd probably commit to it and try and win it but the idea is just to kind of establish position make sure snow can't reach the health kit by constantly harassing him uh and so you see Snow again. He's like coming onto the point. He's trying to do damage, etc. Jerry's down the bottom as well. They're fighting over control of this underneath side. You can see this guy's down here. Like that, their focus is not brawl on the point. They've got like individual players kind of around the point, but their focus is definitely around here as well. So here, as Jake dips down, you can see. Oh fuck's sake! Okay, as Jake dips down. Oh my god, I can't pause this thing. As Jake dips down, there we go. So you can see that it's almost run out of hack as well. So they've managed to delay it for long enough for, for it to almost run out of hack here. Uh, and you'll be able to see in the next 
time we actually get a view of this health pack underneath. I think when Cynic drops down to actually get the health, yeah, you can see there that the hack has actually run out. So now it's Rob's opportunity to get it in there and hack it. And his team's doing a good job, again, of controlling that area for him. So again, you can see tons of them playing underneath the bridge there. They're all underneath there. And there we go. Rob has actually hacked it. So now we're from Cynic's point of view, obviously. So that icon means that Rob has hacked it. So Rob's actually just used his EMP as well. And Snow hasn't used his. But from now on, things start to equalize in terms of the Sombra potential. So how long did it take them? It took them like two minutes, essentially, from getting a decent good, a decent first engagement, maybe a little bit longer, like two and a half minutes, uh, for, from getting in the first time to being able to flip this health pack over. And that's a big pivotal moment in this fight. Uh, and you'll see that but even... It doesn't actually put a huge advantage over to LG Evil. It kind of neutralizes the advantage that Snow actually had. Snow's still got two mini health kits that are actually quite hard to lock off for Rob, or maybe he's just not focusing them. I'm not sure why, but Snow keeps control of both of those minis for pretty much the entirety of the map, I think. Might be like a bit of a uh, an oversight by LG Evil or Rob, perhaps, because it does actually allow Snow to generate his ultimate almost as quickly as Rob does, because he's still doing a lot of damage in the fights as well. So you can see Rob has it up, and this still takes forever, by the way. It's still super difficult to play into Anubis last, no matter what. It's still super difficult to play into a Sombra on Anubis last, and Snow's still getting it up like one every two or three fights, compared to one every fight. Jake actually gets a... They actually get a really good fight here, and Jerry's the only guy left, but they're still not able to clear it. And this really wasn't anything to do with the, the health kit, like their whole play, this... Honestly had nothing to do with it because they've only just managed to switch control of the point. Uh, the switch control of the health kit, it has no effect at this point. Uh, it's just kind of happenstance that Rob managed to get off a really good EMP with the one that he built up just playing the minis around the outside of the point. Uh, and the damage that he'd done. He gets off a good EMP. They're also able to get off a really good de uh, death blossom as well. And they get a couple of individual picks from train. And so they actually have a good ch chance of just closing it out. So I guess that puts one in the tally as well for this this comp can actually close things out even without actually needing to run the game plan, you know? You can just, uh, over the course of taking fights, you might actually be gifted uh, an opportunity. Unfortunately, they can't deal with Jaru before the rest of them get out. Uh, they get a tick out of it. They almost get two ticks. And from here, uh, they basically slowly make the fight turn in their favor. Because Rob starts generating his EMPs way quicker than... Or not way quicker, actually, but definitely quicker than Snow does. Because uh, Super and Vol are just dipping down, getting the health. Uh, Jake can also play down there. So can Train. Uh, Snow's kind of limited. Can only really get to the minis every once in a while, even though it has them hacked. And so even though they're losing a couple of these fights, eventually it kind of... The battle of attrition ends up going their way in the end. And let me see. When does it go their way? It actually goes their way quite a lot later on. So, another two minutes, maybe another three minutes, really. No, another two minutes from when they hacked the health kit to when they actually set up a situation. But I think that's also poor ultimate usage from LG Evil. Once they've got this up, they could just kind of stack ults and they'll get into a position where they can use the MP, block Snow, and be able to take him out and then push things forward. But I think they get kind of greedy just using like that sound barrier on its own to try and turn this fight because they got a decent engagement at the beginning. Maybe they should have played a little more patient about that. Uh, but they get they get beaten a couple of times. And actually, Toronto Esports were pretty good on this map. So this is the fight that where they actually win. They get a vast sound barrier up fairly quickly during this fight as well. They manage to force out quite a lot of the ultimates. Again, Rob generates his ultimate really quickly, and they stay in control of this area the whole time. And they have the whole map. They've been able to stay in control of this area. Uh, Avas generates his ult super quickly, doing a lot of healing on the point. And if they need any additional healing, because he's the only support, they can dip down and get the health kits. Uh, again, the talent comp playing really close quarters on the point. Rob gets his EMP at the same time as Avast has uh, uh, a sound barrier. The sound barrier actually gets cancelled by Snow, but then they reply with an EMP. Uh, Jake has a death blossom that gets quite a bit of damage on different people, but isn't actually able to kill them. And they're able to win it, although it went down to the overtime. But you can see there, like, what the thought process was that they came into it. How they're playing the attack Sombra into it by maintaining control of the lower health kit up until the point where they're able to flip it because they've managed to lock Snow out from being able to constantly rehack it. Then they get Rob in. Rob hacks it. They're able to generate more EMPs. They have the advantage in all of these fights or less of a disadvantage. It kind of equalizes the board more than anything. Uh, Anubis is still very hard to hack. And then they can go into it. So I thought that was pretty cool, the whole process of that fight.
So it was a very long, drawn-out game plan, but it was uh, interesting to watch. This is the last one. Just a short thing to close us out. This is... I mean, I see something. They're running triple tank. A crazy. <laughs> Honestly, silly sightline. Like unicorn players, I call them, and tanks. So a lot of people are getting better at both Winston and Reinhardt. But as I mentioned earlier, gods yeah. can play tank really. Really well. Oh, Beautiful no. pick, though, from Nesh. That kills. <laughs> this kills the triple tank. <laughs> and being on a triple tank, that's. Bye. That's why you have Reinhardt shield, so that <laughs> does not happen. Wolf just pokes his head out the wrong way, and Nash rips his head right. But off the thing the here is way. like, okay, so first of all, that sideline is fucking bonkers. I didn't know that sideline existed at all until I saw Nash just fucking body roll through it. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, where is it? It's like here. Both of the tanks. He's Look at it. It's, it's mental. Okay, so look. He sees Rolf fire the tracer, so Rolf just fucking, he ends his own life. It's like some sniper shit in, like, World War II where people would see the glint off the other person's scope, and then that's it, you're dead, you got, like, a bullet through the eye or something. That's what happened to Rolf just there. He tried to get greedy, he tried to shoot Snizzle Nose with his, uh, uh, with his sniper rifle, and Nesh is like, yep, yeah, I know where you are. But still, how the fuck? I mean, I eat... That's mad. He waits for Kaiser's shield to, like, go up and then gets a headshot on Rolf. That's just, he can't even see him. How does he even know he's there? All right, but the point that I actually want to bring towards this is that uh, Hollywood Hammers have taken out the Anna from a triple tank composition that also has a Winston, so it's not even like they have a, a hog that can self-heal or something. Uh it, and it doesn't have like explosive potential in that sense like you're not just going to get randomly hooked and die it's a very grindy kind of comp that puts pressure on you and instead of pushing their advantage it's weird they just sit there like, they get the pick on the anna kind of as hex was saying or as zp was saying i can't remember which it's like the pivotal part of a triple tank composition is providing all of the healing <laughs> almost all of the healing um and they get rid of the Anna and they are running a dive comp into tanks. And they're running dive comp into tanks now without an Anna. And they don't push it. They just wait for Cloud9 to re-engage. And then Cloud9 are just kind of sat there. They're perfectly happy. They wait for Rolf to get back in. And now they have a second chance at this fight. And yeah, Hammers have an advantage because they're Cloud9 are having to push in through the choke point. And they gave up their positioning. But Hammers also don't really have their positioning set up that well to try and defend. And, uh, you know, this this fight definitely could have gone badly for them. And I definitely think that Hammer should have taken the engagement there. Like, if you get the Anna kill on a triple tank and you're running dive, I press your advantage, man. You would have been able to do that. And look, Fisher actually has to use his Dragon Blade in the end to be able to kill them because they took an even fight rather than just trying to beat them when they didn't have heals. And that means that they don't have the Dragon Blade for the, for the Anubis point B. And Dragon Blade's like one of the most, one of the best ults for Anubis B. It's so crucial to have like your Genji farming Dragon Blades on the, on the end there. Um, and they end up not taking it on this push. And I think uh, it takes them a long time to be able to cap it. I just thought that was kind of weird. But they took out the Anna and then didn't push. Not really sure what was going on. I, I had a, I had a, like an argument with myself where I was like, ah, oh, maybe they're thinking like on 3D chess levels where they actually want Cloud9 to engage into them, because then they can beat them later on in the fight when they've got more cap time, and they can just snowball it for us. But that also doesn't make sense, because you could just do that anyway. You could just leave a guy capping. You leave, your, leave your tracer cap... Oh, they didn't have a tracer, did they? But they could have left Nesh capping, and like had a couple of people on the point. Nesh switches over as they come onto uh, Anubis last, and he's just like the tracer that comes in at the end. So I don't think they were playing 4D chess there. I think they just didn't press an advantage that they could have done. It kind of hurt them in the long run, because Fisher had to invest his ult. Anyway, that was quite a long one, just for being an episode of Rewind, but I hope it was either fun, cool, or informative. If it was neither, then leave a dislike and unsubscribe.